Welcome folks. Today I'm going to be uh, sharing with you how I came about in uh, finding a, a way to measure the, um, the size of carburetor jets. Um, I had a, a problem with the thermoquad on a car a few years back where once I got going about 30 miles an hour um, it would start to lean surge on me. What that means is once you get 30 miles per hour the car would tend to want to go forwards and backwards like it was sort of jerking back and forth and it didn't want to run clean. It's To me it felt like a lean condition so uh, what I tried to do there was uh, try to uh, increase the size of the, the mi uh, main primary jet where it, uh, where it affects that range the most. And so what I started to do is I got a got the jets out of there and found out they were like only 95 thousandths of an inch whereas when I uh, looked it up on the internet for that particular model it called out for a 98 thousandths jet. Uh, another thing that I, I stumbled across while looking at, at uh, gasoline specifications uh, when these carburetors were made in the early 70s uh, gas was probably a lot more uh, I don't want to say quality maybe uh, and you get up here into the uh, oh, the 90s and, and newer uh, they started oxygenating the gas and adding various other things and uh, basically a carb from my standpoint would generally start to run a bit leaner and that's what I figured what the reason was for this lean surge is because these carbs were jetted for the old gas and now we've got this new gas to contend with so on to my lean surge and fixing it um, I generally go up about three thousandths of an inch every time I increase jet size. Um, what I've done in order to facilitate that, all I did really was get a, a piece of coat hanger wire, cut off a length of it. This is a larger piece just to demonstrate. And uh, basically put it in an electric drill and filed a taper on it. And polished it up really nice so there's no scratches in it. This one's just in its rough stage right now. and. Uh, in order to uh, gauge the increase that I made in the jet, basically what I used to resize the jet to make it bigger was a, a needle file. Got that guy right here. It's just a needle file, uh, round diameter. Uh, it's got a, a slight taper on it so you can fit it inside the jet. A little bit shaky for all the coffee. Anyways, it basically you just uh, put it into the jet. I'm not going to do it with this particular one because it's a fixed size and it's a good one. Uh, but to increase the size I just put the, the needle file in there and very lightly, very light pressure. I had to I had to make sure that I turned the file counterclockwise because the way the cutting the cutting teeth on the file uh, are uh, oriented it would actually screw itself into the jet. You don't want that. It would just chew it up. So counterclockwise lightly, very lightly from both sides because it will give you a bit of an hourglass shape. Uh, it's not the factory approved method but I tell you it sure worked for me. Uh, that would be the rough stage, get it to a thousandths or two below what you actually want. Then I'd get the same same file and I'd wrap a piece of oh, 600 grit emery paper around that, just a small piece and where the uh, the ending piece of the emery was, it was so it was in conjunction with the rotation of the file so that it wouldn't grab, act like a flap kind of a thing. So get in there again from both sides, lightly, and then it came to the measuring part. And what I do to measure it is I've got a another one here that is actually sized for this jet. This is a short piece now. I shut it, I shortened it down rather. And what do you do? Most machinists are anybody doing layout work would use what they call uh, Prussian blue. Uh, they do a white lead kind of a thing like for setting up the rear end gears in your car. But I, all I use really is just a black felt pen and I rub that on there, uh, let it dry. And Once it's dry all you have to do is insert it in the jet lightly and turn it whichever way it won't screw in. You don't want it to screw in so you just turn it a few, a few revolutions not too much pressure. And what you'll find when you withdraw that from the jet is you get a shiny spot. All you have to do really is get a hold of a micrometer. Oh, I gotta quit the coffee. Anyways, 
just get on to the shiny spot, measure it. This one shows about 98 thousandths of an inch. So it's actually two thousandths bigger than what it says it's supposed to be. It's probably worn. It's an old one. Uh, the numbers that come up on this jet, if you look at it, you probably won't see it in the video, but uh, it shows the numbers 4096. Now the number 4 is probably to do with the model and or the date, but the 096 is what it is in a decimal size. It's 96 thousandths of an inch. So with this gauge, it's probably a more accurate way to find out what's what the real size is, and it looks like it's two thousandths over than what's stamped on it. And so I ended up going all the way from 95 thousandths on that lean surge problem I had, all the way to 104 thousandths in three thousand uh, three thousandths of an inch steps, until it uh, finally got rid of that lean surge. Now I've, I've got it as economical as I can on the primaries. <coughs> Excuse me. And now it's actually driving really nice. So um, if you happen to want to size your own jets, rather than go out and, well, trust some used parts or something to pick up, this is a good way to, to find out just what size the jets in your carbur carburetor actually are. So with that all said and done, thanks for watching. Take care and bye for now.